Welcome. My name is Eric Massonary. I'm the chaplain of Kidron Bethel Village in North Newton, Kansas. Uh, we are one of the three blue stem communities here in this region of the state. Uh, some of you may be joining us uh, as members of those communities or staff, but I imagine others may be accessing this from other places um, and spaces, so welcome. Uh, this is the second in a series of videos that I'm offering uh, entitled Sacred Readings and Wisdom Stories. And these are meant to be just brief video reflections on uh, particular stories. Occasionally I might bring poems that come out of various uh, spiritual wisdom traditions from around the world. Last time we reflected on a story about St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, this time we'll be drawing on a story out of a different tradition that I'll share with you in a moment. Um, for those who may not have joined us for the first one, uh, I'll just share with you the basic structure of these videos. We'll begin in just a moment with a little bit of centering time. Um, I will read the story that I've brought and we'll move into a bit of silent reflection. And then I'll read it a second time. So you'll always get a chance to hear the reading twice. Um, and after that second reading, I may offer a few questions for reflection, uh, a few observations, and then we'll close with uh, a closing prayer or a blessing or a reading of scripture. So very simple, and it's simply an opportunity to, to uh, receive the gift of wisdom that comes uh, through word of story and uh, creative writing from across uh, many wonderful traditions. So to begin, uh, let's go ahead and start by simply bringing our attention to our body, our breath. We are likely coming to this moment, uh, wherever you may be, uh, out of the fullness of a day. And it can help if we're gonna try to listen deeply, it can help just to pause a moment. And so bring your attention first to your body as it's sitting, standing, whatever you may be doing. And then your attention to your breath, which is something we don't often pay close conscious attention to, but for just the span of several deep conscious breaths, Observe your breath being drawn in and your breath passing out of your body. And let's, let's do that for several good, deep, grounding breaths. And may the breath of God, God's own Holy Spirit, be our guest, be our guide for this time together. The story I've brought to share with you today is uh, from the Hasidic tradition of Judaism, a tradition um, that goes back deep into the 18th century of our common era and continues to today. Um, I've encountered just many wonderful stories out of this tradition uh, that are told, but one of the collections of stories that I've draw I'm drawing from today is uh, was published by Elie Wiesel, uh, Somewhere a Master. And in this book, he follows the lives um, of several of the Hasidic masters and, and rebbas, uh, which would be their term uh, for rabbi, uh, rebbe. Um, in this case, we're going to hear a story about Rebbe Moshe Lieb of Sasov. Sasov is a town in the Ukraine, and uh, Rebbe Moshe Lieb was a bit of a character, it seems. Maybe not unlike St. Francis of Assisi, 
he was certainly known uh, as being a very wise person, but also very deeply compassionate, very sensitive to the needs of people in his community. Um, he was not afraid to hang out on the margins, the edges of his community. He was as comfortable, it seems, in the synagogue as he was in uh, the tavern chatting with people. Um, so you'll hear in this story something of that, that deep compassion and sensitivity, I think, of Rebbe Moshe. Uh, one little anecdote about him I'll share. He was once asked this question. He was asked, Rebbe Moshe, how can you absorb so much pain? How can you take in so much suffering from so many people? And he answered, if their pain is only theirs, then my work and my life are wasted. But their pain is also mine. So why shouldn't I try to alleviate it? If their pain is only theirs, then my work and my life are wasted. Their pain is also mine, so why shouldn't I try to alleviate it? As you hear the, the story, know that you'll hear it twice. I'll always, whatever readings I bring for, for these videos, I'll make sure to read them twice um, since you don't have them in front of you. Um, and what we'll do is at, with the first reading, I'll just invite you to hear it you might find it helpful to close your eyes. Uh, for some of us, that helps us listen a little differently, more deeply. And with that first reading, just simply let the words flow. And you might notice, is there anything in the story that immediately calls to your attention? Uh, is there some detail in the story that captures uh, your attention right away? And then we'll pause in some silence. And then I'll read the story a second time and, and offer perhaps uh, some reflection questions you might take into the si second period of silence. Uh, I'll, I'll just share about this story, a couple of details. It happens on um, one of the most important uh, Jewish feast days, Yom Kippur, on the eve of the Sabbath. Um, and uh, where very important prayers are said before sunset in the synagogue. Also, uh, you'll hear Rebbe Moshe described as a tzaddik. A tzaddik is um, a term used to describe a very righteous, holy person, uh, someone who's believed to be a spiritual master, a very important teacher. And then you'll also hear the term kol nidra, which is the name for the prayers that are given on uh, the eve of Yom Kippur. So here's the story of Rebbe Moshe. Here is what happened one Yom Kippur Eve. The house of study was packed with worshipers ready to intone the solemn, the awe-inspiring prayer of Kol Nidra. But the Rebbe was late. Where but where could he be? What could be more important than to lead the holy community of Sasov in prayer, the most magnificent prayer of all? Curiosity turned into worry, then into fear. What could have happened to their tzaddik? And what if Satan in his cruelty had succeeded in hurting his powerful opponent? Minutes went by, long, endless minutes. The sun had almost set, and soon the time for this prayer would be over. It would be too late. There was a woman among the worshipers who was worried about her infant. She had left him home all alone thinking that she would be back in an hour immediately after Kol Nidra. And now, more than an hour had gone by, so she decided not to wait but to go home to her child. To her surprise, she found that her infant was not alone. A man was cradling her child, singing to him softly. Said the Rebbe, What could I do? As I walked past your house, I heard a child crying. I had to stay with him. Let's be in silence for a moment. And again, just simply bring your attention to whatever might have 
first grabbed your awareness as you heard that story the first time? Now hear the story again, this time as you hear it and, and listen, um, you might ask yourself, what is the wisdom that is given to you in, through this story today as you hear it? Perhaps it's different wisdom than you would hear in it tomorrow if you heard this story or a week from now. Um, that's the gift of stories like this, is there are usually many things to receive from them. But what is the wisdom you receive today from this story and that you're given to see and hear here? Here is what happened one Yom Kippur Eve. The house of study was packed with worshipers ready to intone the solemn, the awe-inspiring prayer of Kol Nidra. But the Rebbe was late. Where, but where could he be? What could be more important than to lead the holy community of Sasov into prayer, the most magnificent prayer of all? Curiosity turned into worry and then into fear. What could have happened to their tzaddik? And what if Satan, in his cruelty, had succeeded in hurting his powerful opponent? Minutes went by, long, endless minutes. The sun had almost set. Soon the time for this prayer would be over and it would be too late. There was a woman among the worshipers who was worried about her infant. She had left him home all alone, thinking she would be back in an hour immediately after Kol Nidra. And now more than an hour had gone by. So she decided not to wait, but to go home to her child. To her surprise, she found that her infant was not alone. A man was cradling her child, singing to him softly. Said the Rebbe, what could I do? As I walked past your house, I heard a child crying. I had to stay with him. What is the wisdom you are given through that story today? And through the actions, the words of Rebbe Moshe. Again, let's take a moment in silence as you hold that question in your heart, your mind, and listen for the wisdom given to you. May we give thanks for the wisdom that we receive from the story and from the source of all wisdom. One thing I'll share with you that I that usually comes to my mind when I hear that story of Rebbe Moshe is um, actually a question, and it's the question, what is the most important thing? What is the most important thing that I'm meant to do right now and direct my attention and intention toward. Or framed a little differently, who is the most important person? Who is the most important person that I should be dedicating my loving attention and intentions to? 
And as I heard, I've heard, I guess, I suppose many teachers say, but one in particular once said, well, the most important thing is whatever's right here, right now. And the most important person is the person you are with. And that applies to even if we are alone with our own presence and selves with God. Perhaps then, too, we might recognize our own importance, our own belovedness in the life and the presence of God. And therefore, better share that love with others as we encounter them on life's way. May you know that love for you. And may it bless you along with the wisdom you've received through this story today. I want to close with uh, words from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I read a few of these verses last week. I want to continue on and read Paul's words in Ephesians chapter 4 as a, as a closing blessing today. I beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility, all gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father, Mother of all, who is above all, through all, in all. Amen. May you know that great love of God this day and each precious day you're given. Amen.